disabled train. That's not better. That's a disabled train. Because we disabled train with the DOA underneath. You got a disabled train? Police emergency. How do we get there now? Inside, inside northbound. Inside northbound. Southbound. Can you direct us? Is he under? Oh, so you're going to have to come with us in the tunnel. I'm going to get to set the power off. All the way down. Power ain't off. It's in DOA, Mike. Oh, this is alive. This one over here behind oh, us. Just got a bag? Yeah, we got a bag. If you can hold this one lane until we get done. Nappe! Where's the bag? When we were running towards this guy we had underneath the train, I said, is he a worker? The reason it being, if the guy was a poor guy working and he got electrocuted, I always feel bad for him. Yeah, I'm going to see like a little bit of cost, right? Everybody uh, get on the train. Everybody get on the train. You guys. Just calm down, man. We're going to move it out quick. This party, we just got to move on the platform. We can let the train go. No problem. Yeah, we can charge for mercy. Uh, we can charge for mercy. Charge for mercy. The guy was out there putting bread on the table and he died. But for some maniac, to, as bad, I know they're all depressed and they leave notes and they're somebody's son. But I got no big pity. I mean, I feel bad that the guy got that way. But I feel a lot worse for some poor guy who was walking the tracks than some guy who purposely leaps in front of a train. People out first. I don't even think it was a train. Yeah, Watch your step, Michael. He wants to go back here. What, you want us to bring him up and out of here? Right up. All right, Like when you get the dead person under a train, and you're not really dealing with a human anymore. It's it's like a, a paraffin figure. It's like a mannequin in the store. You can't actually get emotionally involved at the time because then you can't function in the capacity that you're supposed to. Is that popcorn or is that him? <laughs> you guys bring the truck? Yeah, the truck is there. We got an ambulance here. Once the job is over, the job is over, the people are gone, and you have to disassociate with it. Did you get his name, Dean? Yeah. Because if you let every job that you went on build up inside of you, it would get to a point where you would have to have some sort of an emotional breakdown. No, they want the post All right, get the post control to ride with them. They want somebody to ride with them. Yeah. Okay, Artie, you got everything? Artie! Artie. You're involved so much in debt on this job that if you don't have some sort of an outlet, some sort of a screen to shield yourself from it, it can get to you. And we've had fellows come in and say, hey, you know, this isn't for me, and, and leave. They just can't do it. The first reading is a reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who mislead and scatter the flock of my pasture, says the Lord. There were two things I always wanted to be as a kid. One was a priest and the other one was a cop. Didn't make it as a priest, so I wound up as a cop. The city wasn't exactly my intention of where I wanted to work, but uh, there came a time in my life that uh, the armed services were calling me to do my little bit. So I came into the city because this is a deferrable job. This is the word of the Lord. Yeah, I could show you my grammar school book when I was 11 years old. It's right inside. My ambition was to be a cop. I just always wanted to be a cop. 
people give you that stuff like, I came from a middle class, law abiding family, and that's why I became a cop. I don't know, I just always wanted to be a cop. I remember when I was a kid, if I got in trouble, the first thing I said to the cop was, hey man, I want to be a cop someday. I don't know how many times I've got out of trouble because I said that. Well, I'm a cop first and an emergency cop second. And these guys we work with that aren't real cops, they're not looking to make arrests. They're good, decent men, they go for the emergency jobs, but I never let that slide away from me. I'm, you know, I go on patrol and I look around and I'm still a cop. The guys in emergency want to be in emergency. We do anything. I mean, I've gone in and picked people off toilet bowls that have been dead for like six weeks. You couldn't ask a cop that's happy in a radio car in the 19th precinct to do that. The easiest way to describe it would be a jack of all trades. We have specialized equipment. We have weapons. We're the outfit that this city calls on to do a job when there's no one else to do it. Are all units on patrol wanted in connection with the shooting in the 19th? We get involved with the guns only because we have bulletproof vests and we have heavy weapons. The average police officer on the street only carries his 38 revolver. And if he's got a situation with his fellow with a rifle or a shotgun, he's not really equipped to handle it. Three men stuck up the massage parlor and they were supposedly still in the building. Last year I must have responded on about 30 of those jobs. 29 times I went in there was no one in there. The one time that I did go in and someone was there, it startled me. My initial response to seeing him was, what the hell are you doing here? But since that particular job, I, I respond a little bit differently. So I think since the lights are on, we got to check the fitness. Okay. okay. You want to check? And we got to do it through the window. All right. Let's, check. Let's get a Kelly tool. I got a sledgehammer right here. I try not to make it become routine. Because the day it becomes routine, you're going to get hurt. I was looking for three people, and I knew they all possibly had guns. Uh, I don't want too many. We got loaded shotguns. Yeah, okay. Hey, Yeah, there's a couple of cops in there. Rory! You checked all these behind you, Sash? You checked all these behind you? Yeah. Okay. The name of the game is be careful. There was about eight of us going up the stairs, and we'd spread out, and at, at any given stairway, two guys would go, and the other six guys would stay back, plus there'd be 30 uniform cops behind us. Anybody up there? Yeah, I am. I don't f*** around, hey, this is... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Right up here. All right, get the machine gun here. Anything moves on there, I want you to go fully automatic. These heavy weapons, we don't kill people, thankfully. The sight of them alone, or the sound of them. When you tell a guy, hey, we're out here, there's eight of us, we got four shotguns, two machine guns, a big sledgehammer that crashed the door down. Most guys give it up. Listen, you're moving around in close quarters. Check your guns and let's go up to this. No break. You would have gone anyway. I would imagine they go through the glass. All right, next, uh, next one. Next one. Uh, who's with? Right? I don't know. My lights. Okay, go ahead. Hey, Tony, the fifth floor. floor's been checked out. Fifth yeah. floor's okay. There was just a light left on in the hallway. We're going up to the sixth. Careful, sir. Portable 113 West 42nd Street to Central. The emergency service personnel are aware of the fact that there is a man on the roof, are aware that he wishes to surrender, okay? We've got one perpetrator left on the 17th floor. We can see him from the outside, but we can't get through the office to get him. I'm going to bring some tools out now to break the door down and go in and get him. That's the only one left. You know, guys, you have citywide or third division? He was up on the roof. Now, he was surrendering. He was finished. You know, he didn't want to fight it out. But he wouldn't come out. So when we finally got to him, we broke the door 